Hello everyone, this should be a pretty simple repair video for my 80386SX. Today, the subject of our video is going to be the Compact LTE Elite series and replacing the CMOS RTC battery. If you bought one of these from me, congratulations on your purchase. We try to go through each and every individual battery to make sure it is up to par. Well, the shrink tubing part is I need practice on, but outside of that, we use all the new cells and we get them where we can. These, in this case, happen to be made in Japan. This will cover just about whether you get them from me or you get them from somewhere else or you build them on your own. And there'll be a video for the building your own one coming up at some point. But uh, if you get them in quantities, like one of my buyers did, I put a small piece of electrical tape on them just so they don't touch each other. The, there's no way for short circuiting to happen. So we don't want to do that. So if you get one of those, you just simply remove it by whatever means necessary. And it just pulls right off. Getting to the battery itself is very easy on this notebook, fortunately, and all you need is a T8 Torx screwdriver to do so. Let's do it. Hold on a minute. One other step. Disconnect all power. Even if the battery is a paperweight, you will want to get that out of there too. Did that. Good. In compacts, we're very idiot proof back in the day because it tells you exactly how many screws you need to remove. Let's see if I can get it to go on the camera. That looks like it tells you how many screws exactly to remove, and there's arrows next to them. Yeah. It's almost idiot proof because there's one right there. So let's take those off now. So, got two out of the six completely out, five out of the six are at least loose, and now we'll work on the back one here. I know you can't see it, but it is the shortest of the screws, the other five are exactly the same, same size, yep, and that's exactly what I didn't want to do. So we are now missing two screws out of this. Uh, oh, nope, no we're not, we're just missing one. All right. We'll find another screw and uh, There we go. Might even have to move this puppy closer. Oh, bear with me for a second here. All right. Next, this cover, we put this LCD back as far as it can go. We pull the palm rest off. Voila. Look at that, folks. There's your battery right there. And it's darn near as easy as it can possibly get here. Just able to grab this. Uh, You just gotta undo the plug. Gotta have a 
goofy thing going on for my tripod, so I'll try to do my best to show it. Damn camera won't cooperate right now. The connector's right there. Right next to that uh, where it says Rev B or Rev H. And it pulls right out. One thing to show you, if you bought the battery for me, that's uh, eBay seller 80486SX. I know the threes and the fours are a little bit different here, but there is a reason for that. The connectors are not quite the same, but they do fit. I couldn't find this exact connector, which is the original, on the left. So I went with a PH20 connector. The spacing is about the same. And you just want to make sure where it has this ridge, if I can get the camera to do what it's supposed to do. This goes towards the CPU. The CPU is the thing that says Intel i486DX2. So it may take a little finagling to get it in, but you can get it in. So that every battery I ship out is tested for charging in an actual LTE Elite of some kind. It wasn't this one for your batch, for the first batch, but no big deal. They're all the same across the board. And it's in. Same drill. I'm just going to line this up. You may have to take my beauty cover labels off. It's up to you, whatever you decide to ultimately do with them. This is the most crippled of the batteries that I made, or I practice, if you will. And the second that this power is connected to this thing, it will take voltage, provided the battery is any good. And we'll go to upwards of 8.3 something volts. So do bear that in mind when you're uh, when you're trying to work on these laptops. So that should pretty much be it. I do a word of caution if you do build these on your own and the heat shrink isn't perfect. This cover does go on fairly easy, but it'll be a little bit of a tighter squeeze. One new thing to keep in mind is this has to snap in or it has to line up. I may actually do that one off of camera. Yeah, this one looks like it's a... Uh... I'll take this cover off again. And I don't know if you can see it, but you want to do this. There's some tabs here, look here, there's a few of them. And you want to line that bottom of the palm rest up with that. This is the most difficult part of the repair, and that's saying something, because this is a very easy repair. And And all you got to do at this point is put the six screws back in. If you have one that's deformed, it may be a little bit of a tighter squeeze, but it will be fine. That's it. Power back in.
The system may or may not come back on automatically. I don't remember what this one does. Back went in pretty hard. Oh, yeah, it did indeed turn on. And to be expected, we are getting unpleasant trees through the booting process. You just want to hit F1. I don't know why it didn't uh, go in the compact utilities, but you know, this is pretty easy to do in DOS. I think it's the time command. I gotta remember, do my uh, history lesson here over. So it would be 9, 41 a.m. Oh my God, what a day already. 41. What the hell? Keyboard's acting weird. Okay, let's see if we can get the compact BIOS to do what it's supposed to do here. Oh, oh boy. What the hell? Well... The compact utilities are on this hard drive. I don't know what happened here, but. There we go. Ah, oh, man. Maybe it's the BIOS utilities that are jacked on this hard drive. Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. Maybe we can change it in Windows 3.1. Is that... Our keyboard is obviously in a weird state here. Uh, it might be a control panel provided I could find such thing. <laughs> Taking time, there we go. So it is not 1980 anymore, so we'd have a... Probably for half of you watching this, it's probably... Too bad that it's not 1980 anymore. It is 9 43 a.m. And we should be. Ah, Alt X, Alt F, X. There you go. What the hell? I, th I swear I did that correctly, but. It is what it is. What? Oh. Current date. Enter new date. 07-22. Oh, I know what I did wrong. Hey, what the hell? You must have a goofy keyboard on here. All right, I, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, I don't have a setup disc, so yeah, my keyboard configuration is obviously a little bit jacked here, so I gotta figure that out, but that should be pretty much it for installing the new battery, so. You have any questions, comments, or constructive criticism? That's what the comment section's for. And uh, thank you for watching.